Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi DB. My name is Matthew, welcome, glad you're here. So, is this the biggest super cycle confirmation we've ever had? Right now, this point in the market, summer 2024, what are your thoughts? I know what my thoughts are, and I'll tell you right now, I think this is all what's happening right now, this pullback. I think this is gonna be, in my opinion, of course, not financial advice, the biggest, one of the biggest bull runs in crypto history upon us. And I'm gonna tell you why I believe that. Super exciting, let's get into it. First of all, historically, what's happening right now has happened every single crypto market cycle. If you simply look at, well, first I created this really bad spreadsheet, which I've talked about in some other videos. Whenever we've had a halving, like November 28th, 2012, July 9th, 2016, May 9th, 2020, uh, the bull run usually lasts about 12, on average, I'd say about 15 months, if you average all these together. Actually, we can add this now. We can change this because we have a date here. This was on April 19th or April 20th, depending on your time zone. We don't have a start of the bear market yet, but we know that we've had this fourth halving. So, um, but with all these prior halvings, the bull run after the halving has been on average about 15 months. Now, on every halving, right after it happened, the market kind of went sideways and down for a little bit, maybe a little up here and there in a small amounts, but on average, it's taken about 3.3 months until the bull runs resumed. The May 11th, 2020 halving, uh, after it, it took four months until we saw Bitcoin really take off. You can see that right here on this chart. Uh, this is the last bull run Bitcoin chart. You can see here, May 10th, 2020. Uh, that's one day before the halving started, uh, May 11th, 2020. You can see we kind of basically went down on halving day. We climbed a tiny bit. We went down for a couple months right here. Uh, then we're basically now in July of 2020, July 12th, 2020. So two months later, we had a little fake out thinking, oh, we are starting. It's on. And then, nope, not really, not back down again. And we didn't really start cruising up here until basically right here. You have almost five months until Bitcoin really took off after the halving. And then the alts followed suit about a month later. So, and if you look at the previous cycles, you can see similar patterns Nothing unusual here so far. We are having a pullback, which is totally normal, and Bitcoin's only pulled back, I don't know, not that much. It's reached, what, close to 73,000 so far, this bull run, and it's pulled back to, uh, what, now it's at like 65. Mark Twain tells us history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. So is it going to rhyme again? If it does, having the bull run resume a crazy uptrend about four or five months after the Bitcoin halving, we, we will have something different in play this time. We will have the biggest possibly ETF inflows we've ever seen. So we had some tremendous inflows early on when the ETFs were launched earlier this year. And I think we're going to see a much larger amount of allocations happen towards the tail end of this year and early next year. And the reason I think that is because if we look at the biggest allocators in the world, these are sovereign wealth funds, endowments, pension plans, foundations. It can take them eight to 12 months or longer just to accomplish the due diligence on making an investment. So first they've got to do their research and do their due diligence. Then they've got to move through their investment mandates and investment committees. Then they have to educate their clients and then the allocations happen. So a lot of these big allocators are still in this process because these ETFs were just launched earlier this year. So that's going to take them time to move forward with this so they can actually get everything ready and the infrastructure set up and all of their boxes checked before they can actually make these allocations. So if we look at it from that perspective, the largest allocations, in my opinion, in these ETFs haven't even occurred yet. Right. There you have it right there. Sovereign wealth funds, pension funds. They're all educating and prepping right now, and they sounds like they will be just in time for when the bull run resumes. If it resumes, of course, I could all be wrong on all of this, and maybe we're in a bear market now. I don't think so. 
Next, the political narrative has completely changed. To further secure America's future and create opportunity for young people, I will end Joe Biden's war on crypto. We will ensure that the future of crypto and the future of Bitcoin will be made in America. Otherwise, other countries are going to have it. Uh, these days, during this election year, it looks like having an anti-crypto stance will lose you the election. This started with Donald Trump coming out saying he will be the crypto president. He wants the industry here. Very cool. We know RFK probably doesn't have a chance of, of coming close to winning, but we know he is pro crypto, definitely pro Bitcoin, doesn't want it taxed. Uh, and now we see the Democrats taking notice of this and turning their stance on crypto altogether. Now we see the SEC concluding its Ethereum investigation. So ETH 2.0 consensus no longer investigated, no longer under investigation. This is all hugely favorable for regulation. And it looks like the Democrats have to take this stance or they will lose the election. Now, do I trust what the Democrats are doing here? No, obviously they're doing an about face just because they see, they probably know that there are, it looks like roughly 50 million crypto uh, holders in the United States. So yeah, but when they, if they win, I don't trust that they'll keep this stance at all. Now, will we sink or soar in 25? I believe we are going to soar for a number of reasons. One of them is macro and global liquidity. I believe crypto is greatly affected by macro. We hear legends, uh, longtime legends like Michael Howell, Raul Paul, Mike Maloney, basically every gold bug that ever existed, telling us how global liquidity directly affects asset prices. And one way to gauge global liquidity is to look at central bank asset balance sheets for the biggest central banks in the world. Now, this is not the only metric we can use, but it's definitely a decent gauge. There are other factors at play, and I'm starting to track this stuff with some software I'm building. So uh, subscribe if you're interested in that. Uh, right now, you have People's Bank of China's balance sheet kind of riding a little bit higher. I think this is an outdated chart. I saw one that also had April and it was trickling up. Uh, but you see the Bank of Japan here. The balance sheet data is trickling up as of May 2024. You see the uh, balance sheet for the uh, ECB, Euro European Central Bank, sort of trickling down still. Likewise, you see the Federal Reserve balance sheet data sort of trickling down. And you see the Bank of England also trick trickling down. So we have this. We have the... Uh, ECB, the Fed, and the Bank of England uh, balance sheets are trickling down, meaning liquidity is not being totally injected into the system by central bank asset balance sheets as of right now. But when you combine it with China, the Bank of Japan, and you look at some other factors, you can see that it's trickling along. But what we need to take into account is what investors look at. And what do investors look at? They don't look at what's happening right now. They, they're, they're, we're not investing on what is taking place today. Investors are looking at what's happening three to six months out. Now, if this is all indicative, I believe there are a couple technical recessions going on in the world right now in some big economies. Uh, the USA has argued that it could be headed to a recession. So I think it's looking like it. And you see on these big balance sheets, liquidity is still uh, be drying up a bit. And then investors are not going to look at that. I mean, some are retail investors probably are, but the pros are going to look out and they're what they're what they what they're probably most likely going to do. What they have historically done is when looking out, they're going to determine, yeah, you know what? The Fed has no choice but to start easing soon. We can't have, you know, like Raul Paul says, we can't have the baby boomer industrial complex crash have them lose all their wealth and retirement wealth. And so they're going to have to start easing eventually. And the investors look out to that happening. So if it's believed there is a recession starting to happen now, investors are going to be tracking not only liquidity, but also predicting that what's going to be happening three to six months from now. And that prediction would be probably easing probably liquidity injections, probably the balance sheets of all these banks growing again. And they're not going to buy after that happens. They're going to buy three to six months before that happens, usually maybe even longer. For me, I'll buy even earlier than that. I'll hold for one, two, three, four, five years. I have long time horizons for my investments. So I believe that 
recessions coming, possibly. <clears throat> I believe that if there's no soft landing, we have a great recession. The Fed has no choice but to ease. And if there is no huge recession that happens in the U.S., then we'll see what happens. But if not, you still have this election narrative. We have the favorable regulations. We have uh, ETF inflows. And we have this historic data that tells us everything that's happening right now is just normal. So in my opinion, this is the biggest opportunity if you have not been dollar cost averaging in during the bear market. I believe you have an opportunity to get some really good deals right now. My portfolio is still in the green, but on some of my alts, I'm in the red because I bought them uh, probably seven, eight months ago. But I might do a little dollar cost averaging myself to, to uh, see if I can lower my cost basis on some of those newer alts I reallocated into uh, late last year. Very excited. I'm not worried about this at all business as usual in cryptocurrency. All right, everyone, I hope this video finds you well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.